Last time on Narrative Tutorials by Decryption. So in the last video, we made a system where you can begin a quest by talking to the NPC, collect an item such as a gem or a key, and then complete the quest and unlock extra dialogue. However, there was one small problem with that, is the item was always available. You could collect it at the start of the quest and then never achieve the dialogue. And if you had 50 quests, you'd have 50 items hanging around, for example, and it's not very performant. In this tutorial, we're going to look at dynamically spawning quest items. Now this might be functionality that you want, in which case, enjoy. However, so what we can do is we can take this class here and we can spawn it when the quest begins. So if you go into your quest and go to the event graph, we can go to the override and we can say on quest started. There is currently a bug with narrative. I am on narrative version 2.6. The bug might not be present in your version. So add a branch here, which just says, does this quest equal and drag off and say self. Otherwise this quest started will run for every single quest. Just test it. It just means if you don't do this, then every single quest that you have will all fire their own starters at the same time. It's not fantastic. So yeah, so once you've done the little branch fix, in this true, we can do spawn actor from class. We can set the class to our BP key pickup. The transform, we can break apart and we can go and get the location and rotation of this key element. There we go, and I've added the transform location and rotation, and I've set the collision handling override. Then all we do is drag off from the return value, and we can do set task, and we can set it to the get item task. And then we can also drag off from here and call set argument, and we can type E. And then jump back into your main and delete the item pickup. And once we start the game, as you can see, the item is no longer here. But if we talk to Eric and we begin the quest, the key has now spawned, and we can pick it up and everything works the same. Next, I'm going to show you an alternative way to do this, which makes this spawning just a little bit more generic instead of having to write this out every time. If you've got a quest super long, you don't want to be having 50 spawns in here. It can look a bit messy. The other benefit of making it more generic is that at the moment, this will only allow you to spawn on quest starter. Also, the range of places where you can actually spawn things in events is very limited. If you wanted to spawn it throughout a dialogue option or in the middle of a quest, quest you'd struggle a little bit whereas the generic way i'm going to show you you can spawn it from any single node on the quest or the dialogue so in the previous tutorial i showed you how to set up a tool i designed called the narrative world controller where it's a component you attach to your character and you can create as many functions as you like to perform specific tasks in this case we're going to add a new function and we will call it spawn pickup and in here we're going to basically go and copy the exact code we've just spawned here like so and we'll paste it in here and in Instead of passing everything we want to, we're going to instead drag it into the function to create it as a variable. You can also click the function and just add it manually to the input. So the task I will drag across and the argument I will drag across as well. And the benefit of dragging it across is it does also add the defaults to these. The other things we need to drag across is the transform location. You can drag the rotation if you want. In my case, it, I don't need it anyway. And just connect up the returns. Then I'm just going to drag from this return and I'm going to cast it to a BPA pickup item, which is the which is the abstract bass version and then this way we can easily just drag it to where we need it to all i'm going to quickly do just to make the blueprint a bit nicer is i'm going to rearrange how these are formatted what i am going to do now that we've created these variables a little tip is i'm going to hold alt and click on these variables here just to disconnect them and then i'm going to drag from these variables and i can actually access the inputs as variables like so and this will go and access that variable there so you don't have to drag it all the way across and you make sure you click the variables now it looks much neater and now that we've added that function to the world controller we can go and create a custom event for it as well so i'm going to come in here and create a blueprint and type narrative event here and i'll call it any spawn pickup i will override the execute event function then from the narrative component i will get the owning form. i will cast this to the bp player i will get the world controller then I will call spawn pickup. And I will just promote these arguments to classes. Make sure you don't click local variable, that won't achieve the same goal that you need. Perfect, make sure you tick all the eyeballs just to make sure they're exposed. And that's it, now we have an event we can use. Final thing you need to do, go into the get display graph text event, and then we just need to give it some text on what to show. So I'm just gonna call it spawn P 
pickle and then I will just add the class here like so I'm not bothered too much about the other arguments as long as I know it's spawning a pickle I can see and that's it now we have a really generic way to spawn items which means we don't have to go into the quest and do it on quest start here anymore which means we can get rid of that function but instead you can come to any point you want so I know I want to do it on this key event here I'm going to add an event and I'm going to call it spawn pickup and then all I have to do is populate the variables so my class will be the key the location will be whatever it was last time my task will be the get item and my argument will be e just jumping back into here ladies and gentlemen don't put it here narrative events only run at the end of a node's lifespan if this node get item key is waiting for you to collect the key before it finishes it won't run the event so in this case i'm going to put it on the first node you can put it anywhere you want so there we go. So now that'll spawn the pickup when the quest begins in a nice event driven way. So I can come here, I can call this guy and then the key will be spawned. I can pick it up. It'll say talk to Eric again. I can come back and then he will say, oh, a key, the door is yours and the door will open. Perfect. So we now have a basic pick up a key system, but let's take it one step further. The key that we're using spawns a Niagara particle inside of it, which has a color setting that we can modify. So if we go to our world controller or however you spawn it, what I'm going to do is actually remove the class from the spawn pickup. So instead of removing it to keep it generic, I'm going to create a new one called spawn pickup key. It's going to be the exact same, but instead of passing a class, it will simply use the key and we can remove the class from the inputs. This way, we don't need to cast it to a pickup item because it will already have everything we need on it. And this way, we can now access specific key properties. So we can drag from here, we can say get Niagara, which is the particle system. And we should be able to go set that color parameter here. We will set the parameter name to color 01, because that's what it's called here. Make sure it's identical in the caps and everything. And then we're gonna simply drag this over and stick it on the spawn particle key and we'll just untick it and we'll just get param just like we did. I'm going to rename this variable just to make it a little easy to understand to color. And then just like we did before, you might have to re-add this variable like so. Then just like we did before, I'm going to go into the events and I'm simply going to copy this spawn pickup event holding control and then click copy. And instead of spawn pickup, I will do spawn key. The spawn pickup's good for general things, but if you want more customization, we're going to need to go into a bit more depth. And in the execute event, instead of passing spawn pickup, I'm going to type spawn key. And you'll really notice as, as we do this and it gets easier and easier, the world controller really does start assisting in amazing ways. And then I'm going to drag from the color and I'm going to simply promote it to a variable. Perfect. And then all we need to do is change the graph display text, spawn key. And then on our quest, we can simply come here. Instead of spawn pickup, we're going to do spawn key. Just delete the class variable. You don't need it. And spawn key. And then I'm going to delete the class because we don't need it. And I'm going to say simply like so. So it'll spawn key blue or spawn blue key, however you want to really do it. Then on the quest, I'm going to come here. I'm going to change it to spawn key. The spawn location will be the same thing. I'm going to paste the location in. I'm going to set the same task because I after all, you don't need to set a task on it and it will be the key. And this time I can set the color and I will spawn a nice blue key like so. Everything else should remain the same. And you might think, well, that's all good and all, but what's the point of changing a color? And this is where we can do some funky stuff now. So what I'm going to do is get another position of a different key, like so. So we will put this one, say, here. I'm going to come to this key here, and instead of just spawning one key, I'm going to make it spawn two keys. So we can add one here. We can do paste. We can get the new location from here. And I'm going to paste it here, like so. Everything else will remain the same, but I'm going to change the argument to blue key. And I'm going to make the other key into a red one. So we have a red key and then a blue key, like so. And now that we've done that, we can come into the dialog here and we can add a third option. So if I take this has done task here and connect it all. So has he got the key? But we're not going to say key anymore. We're going to say, has he done the red key? And then we'll change his text to a red key, like so. And then we can change the other one to the blue key. And then ew, a blue key i'm from the red tribe now you may notice you will get a bug where i will come up to him and i will say give me a key i will collect the blue key and when i take it up to him and give it him it will still say the same reply which is odd the reason it does this is sometimes narrative doesn't reconfigure 
the order which it checks these. Now there are two ways you can do this. You can add a condition to everyone or you can just reconnect it. As you can see in dialog three, two, four, it will be going three, two, four, because that's the order I added it. So all you can do is if you clear all the nodes on it, so it's empty on the NPC replies, and then reconnect it in the order you want it to be checked. So you want the red key to be checked first, then you want the blue key, and then you want the begin quest. It's a, it's an error you won't encounter often, but every so often it does happen. And now if you walk up to him, he will say, no, this is my door. So we will collect the blue key first. And when we hand it to him, he will say, oh no, a blue key, I'm from the red tribe. Okay, so we go and find the red key. There we go, which is more of an orange key. And then when we give it him, he will say, oh, a red key, the door is yours. And now we have built a tool which spawns specific keys wherever we want it to. And we have conditional logic on the dialogue nodes to take it to a specific area. And that's how you can open a door with a key. And it's not just limited to opening doors, you can progress quests, you can unlock dialogue options if you have a specific item. And we could easily carry this on from the blue tribe here, and we can say add a play response. Oh, I'm so sorry. And then we just end the response. Whereas before you wouldn't have that dialogue option. Another option we have is, and you can make it unlock dialogue that you've never done before. So if I come in from here and add a new player response here, I can type this, do you like blue keys? And what we can do on here is add a condition here, the same as we have done on the other one, where we can say has get item blue key. And then we can just make him come and say the same blue thing. But now if we walk up to him, we won't have that dialogue option until we collect the blue key i like keys what do you want open the door or goodbye open the door no this is my door go away so let's find the blue key and now when we talk to him we'll have a third dialogue option blue key do you like blue keys Ew, a blue key, I'm from the red tribe. And just to double check it still works, we can come in and say, open the door, ew, a blue key, I'm from the red tribe. So we collect the orange key, and we can still do the blue key, but we can also come in and just say, ew, a red key, the door is yours. There we go. So I hope this tutorial was useful to you. I will link the narrative world controller tutorial. You can do it from the events here. I just prefer this method because then we can add it really anywhere we want. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you next time.